And when I heard that idea on the podcast, I was like, wow, why can't I start an urban hiking business in Kansas City? Well, we'll get started. It's uh, great to be together again. And this is going to be a fun conversation with, with Lisa Pena, who I think we can uh, talk about a number of different things. One, just her entrepreneurial journey of seeing an idea and turning that into reality. And then I think there's some cool things she's doing uh, around togetherness and bringing people together. Even during a tough year last year, she found ways to bring people together. And I think this group all appreciates togetherness because we've been doing this now for over a year. And, uh, and so it'd be cool to hear some of the stories that you've seen and some of the lessons you've learned along the way about how people spend time together just in hiking is, uh, is beneficial. And then talk a little bit about some of the hidden history of Kansas City that you have found and mined out and that we might, it might be all around us and we just don't know. So I'm going to hand it off to you, Lisa, and let you tell us a little bit about your journey and what all you've done and what inspired you to start Urban Hikes. All right. Thank you so much, Randy. Thank you, everyone, for having me here this morning. I'm going to share my screen because I actually have a little presentation that I prepared. I am the owner of Urban Hikes Kansas City, and I started this business two years ago. I never, I mean, none of us knew that the pandemic was going to happen, of course, and I didn't realize that actually the business that I have of leading hikes is actually something that during the pandemic worked pretty well. Um, The only time that I was pretty much out of commission was when we were in the stay-at-home orders. Um, After that, though, I've had urban hikes. But before I go into my urban hikes, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I have some pictures on here on the screen. I am a former Peace Corps volunteer. So that's me in the middle there with um, during training about 20 years ago, actually, or more a little less than 20 years ago. But you can tell it's an old picture. I'm with a lot of other Peace Corps volunteers, and Peace Corps is something that has been very instrumental in my life. I was in the Dominican Republic. Additionally, I have a picture of my husband and I, and then in the corner, I have a picture of myself backpacking. I love backpacking, um, and I think that that was my backpacking experience and my love for hiking was really something that motivated me to start this business of Urban Hikes Kansas City. I also am a UMKC grad. I'm sure we have some UMKC grads in the audience. I have my master's in public administration from UMKC. And then I'm originally from the DOT. I grew up there. My parents still live there. And I'm constantly going back and from the Rosedale area. And I also really love God and love people. That just gives a quick background. Um, And as I say, I'm, I'm from Kansas City. So I heard about an idea to on a podcast about urban hikes and I had never really heard the idea of urban hikes and when I heard that idea on the podcast I was like wow why can't I start an urban hiking business in Kansas City the podcast was side hustle nation and they were talking about a woman who does urban hikes in San Francisco After I heard her podcast, I contacted her and told her that I want to replicate this in Kansas City, but of course it would be my own business. She has her own business and she was all for it. That took about a year or so to just for me to process, for me to create my routes. And as I mentioned, I started my business two years ago. I launched it in um, March of 2019. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my Um, hikes that I have. And I have a lot of pictures from the different routes. And as Randy mentioned, we'll talk about some of the history. And as we're going through these pictures, I want you to think about the places, the pictures that we're actually seeing, and if there are places that you have gone. The first route that I created was my Crossroads and Westside Urban Hike. Have you been to, and, and you know, and these are more rhetorical questions, but have you been to this hidden bridge that is behind the FBI building in the west side? That's what that picture is in the left there. Um, it's the bridge that you've probably driven under many times on 670, but you 
but many Kansas haven't actually been there. That's one of the highlights of my hikes. And it's actually part of the Riverfront Heritage Trail. And the art behind it is um, birds and this art piece is called flocks and the entire bridge is covered with this fence that has these birds and every single bird is individual. Um, so that's something that is just I love to highlight on my hikes. We go to Observation Park and we see we go through many alleyways and we see a lot of street art. After I got that first route out um, it was a lot easier for me to create other routes, but um, as, I mean, as a new business owner, getting this first route out, walking through the crossroads in Kansas City, Missouri, the West Side neighborhood, it took a while to actually, to actually get that out and figure out, you know, where should we turn, where should we go? Um, but I have more routes now. So another route that I have is a really, there was a really popular one around Christmas time is a plaza urban hike. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is that my urban hikes actually are about four to six miles. Um, part of it to make it more than just a walking tour is that we're actually getting a lot of exercise and I purposely integrate hills into my urban hikes. On the plaza route, we talk a lot about the history of segregation and we talk about the neighborhoods and how there are covenants that excluded minorities. And we talk a lot about that while we're walking around the different places that represent that. Um, I wanna mention this statue in the middle. This is actually in the Crestwood area, um, Brookside along the trolley trail. And if you haven't ever seen the statue before, this is the coolest statue it's actually called the Goddess of the Broken Birds. This is right next to the UMKC campus. And people literally bring broken birds and set them next to her, if you can see them in the background. That's something that is um, this is really fun on my hikes. And I really like to point out these hidden gems that people don't um, automatically see if they're driving by. In Kansas City, we have such a culture to drive to our destination. And very rarely do we actually walk around and take note of everything, like all of these details that are around us. I also want to point out those murals in the corner there. That was a, that was a, those are murals that were five different murals that were painted last October on the plaza. If you haven't seen them, I highly recommend stopping by the plaza and checking them out. They're right next to Chewy's. I also have a fitness hike and this was really fun. Um, what we did was we, I collaborated with a fitness instructor and I still do. And we go into the West Bottoms and find really cool places like these ramps in front of an old industrial buildings that were part of the stock exchange and we, the livestock exchange. And we'll do lunges and jumping jacks and push-ups, and then we'll keep walking. We end that hike along the Rock Island Bridge um, I'm not sure if you know about the Rock Island Bridge and Mike Zeller, who is one of the developers who's going to turn an old railway bridge that is right behind High V Arena and goes over the Kaw River. He's going to turn it into a pedestrian bridge and it will be a destination where there'll be some food kitchens from similar to food trucks zip lining, all kinds of really things. And it will create a segue from KCK to KCMO. And he comes out and we'll talk to our groups and share about his project. One thing that has been really fun for me are the private hikes that I have. I mean, as an entrepreneur, I private hikes are really helpful because on the weekends is when I have the most demand for hikes in general, which are my public hikes. But then during the week, I'm, it's nice to have hikes as well. And so those hikes have been really, they've, they're usually during the week with family groups. Um, recently, I had a group, I had a private hike for a team building with a <clears throat> NAIC. And also I had a hike with the with the Visit Kansas City group. And that's something that has been really fun and 
really people get um, out of their comfort zone when they're, you know, out of the zone of being in the office or just working virtually from their computer when they actually come on these hikes and they're with their team members. Um, because as we all know, we don't always, you know, go out and spend time with our team members outside of work. And this has been really powerful for them. Um, and just like taking pictures, seeing things, and they get to know each other um, in a different way. In in the middle picture here, I wanted to share about the, the woman who is, she's, on, well, if, I don't know if your screens are flipped, but one of the women here had never they had never met her in person because she had joined the team and they hadn't gotten together in person. It's the woman who's, who's wearing like a longish, like bluish shirt. And um, she, like this team actually met her in person for the first time on the urban hike, um, even though they had been working together. And so just what a, what a fun way to get to know your teammates outside of working, you know, just sending emails and having team meetings that are so structured around the content of work. I have a collaboration with a mural festival called Spray CMO, and they are the reason why we have so many murals in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. They, there are other murals that are painted outside of that festival, but the reason why that every year more keep popping up is because of this festival. It's a festival that happens every September and it's been happening for the last four years. I have a route that specifically highlights the 2020 murals. And this, this, mural hike is really fun. Um, I have a lot of background on the artists just from talking to them or um, researching them through their Instagram. And I get to talk about the artists themselves and then take people to cool places like this alley here. This alley is called Art Alley. It's between 17th and 18th Street along Cherry and Locust and the East Crossroads. And um, it's something, of course, you can go on your own as well. But so many Kansas Cityans haven't been there. And I love taking people there. And I take Girl Scouts. I actually have a whole lot of Girl Scout groups and I take them there and they look at all the different murals. And it, um, it's, it's a really cool hike because our downtown is just filled with colorful murals, but someone doesn't always know how to get to every single one because many of them are hidden in, in different different alleyways or behind buildings but on that route i i take i take everyone to to probably more than 30 murals and we talk about them and it's um just this really amazing colorful experience another collaboration that has been really um, helpful especially during the winter has been a collaboration with the casey streetcar and local art galleries i was in touch with the streetcar and it was last November and we're like, let's come up with a hike. Let's come up with a winter urban hike because you're probably seeing my pictures and you're thinking, wow, this is really cool for the spring, the summer and the fall, but what do you do in the winter? And this hike came out from the winter because we go into different art galleries. This is a picture at the Belger Art Gallery and we spend about 20 minutes in each art gallery and boutique hotel and we highlight these hotels where we actually go to different meeting rooms that are very historical over a hundred years old that have incredible detail and we're inside and so we've literally done this hike in the winter time with the with it snowing in the rain just because we are outside some but we aren't outside the majority of the time but we still are getting exercise we're walking up steps and we're seeing really cool things and my last hike that I want to highlight that I do is a Strawberry Hill in downtown Kansas City, Kansas hike. And this is the one that is probably closest to my heart just because I am from Kansas City, Kansas. And there's usually, there's been a stigma or a stereotype to not walk around KCK or to, um, yeah, to just not go there. And I really like to break that with this urban hike, um, there is a, a bridge that is called the Inner City Viaduct or the Freedom Trail Bridge that is part of the Riverfront Heritage Trail and it starts around Cobb Point and goes 
um, straight until you get in through through the West Bottoms. It's really the bridge that's underneath I-70. If you can imagine where you are, if you're driving on I-70, coming from the west, going east, and you're driving over the West Bottoms, this picture here of the bridge is where we're walking underneath that bridge, and it's a pedestrian bridge with a whole lot of art. And it's also called the Freedom Trail Bridge because many people who were enslaved would escape from Missouri and they would escape along the Missouri River and come over to Quindaro, Kansas to be free. And the bridge is right along that path. Um, there are times when it was winter time and people who are enslaved would actually escape over the ice along the river. And we talk about that when we're on this bridge and we highlight what's around it. Um, we also highlight a lot of ethnic churches in Strawberry Hill. There are many churches there that started with being like a Russian Orthodox or a Slovenian church. And this is a picture of a Slovenian church that is now open, of course, to everyone. But originally it started out as a church that was specifically for Slovenian immigrants as they moved here. And this was built over a hundred years ago. And many of you, many of you have probably seen the Strawberry Hill Museum or have heard about it. And this is a picture of a hike that I had with, that was a private hike um, on Saturday with the women with a group called Women Who Explore and also some women who are part of the Women Who Mean Business group and they collaborated together and we had a large hike and it was just all about you know women meeting each other networking and learning at the same time about the history of that area. There are some amazing murals in KCK. There is a whole mural um, project that had been that has been done by an artist named Jose Faust and these are some of the murals that are part of that and that's in the downtown area um, we see these murals on the hike um, and they represent the different ethnicities and cultures in Kansas City Kansas although there are, there are many cultures there are more than 50 languages that are spoken in the school district but these are a couple that represent some um, in in the left there is the mural that represents African-American culture and this mural actually mixes it with um, African culture and modern African-American culture. The mural in the middle represents all of the different Mexican folkloric dancing from their different states. Every style is a little bit different. And the one in the corner represents the Hmong culture and the mural um, in the upper corner is a mural by someone who has a really interesting style. His name is Dink Casey. And um, he, and this is actually on his family's, um, on the wall of, the, of his family's house. And we have permission to, to talk about it as we pass by. And of course, there's the split log mural that is in, um, of Matthias Split Log, who was an, who moved to Strawberry Hill in the 1850s or so. Um, and I talk a lot more about that on the hike. Um, but if you haven't seen these murals, these murals are huge, they're beautiful, and um, they're, they're such a gem that we have just right over um, in downtown KCK. And in that, um, the last slide I want to show about downtown KCK is a couple indoor places that we go. Um, as I mentioned, there are many churches that we see, and one of the churches is the first um, Catholic church that was in Kansas City, Kansas. It was called St. Mary's Church. And that is where you see these boxing, the boxing ring, the punching bags, and it's being repurposed now for a program called the Police Athletic League, where they reach out specifically to kids and they have over 800 participants that participate in their programs. And I'm talking about youth participants and they do boxing, archery, a community garden. They are planting grapes to teach them about um, making wine this year and teach them how to. And um, they also have a food, they have a food pantry. And that's something that um, you would never know just by walking by that this program exists. You would never know what it looks like on the inside. And this is the, um, it's, a, it's this community program now that is so impactful for these kids. And the director who is in that top picture 
with the gray sweatshirt is a retired police officer. And he says, if these kids weren't participating in our programs, they would be in gangs and they would be in doing criminal activity. It's just such a powerful thing that they have this. Um, and also we stop at a place called Chrisman Sausage. And then there's a church um, in Strawberry Hill called St. John's Church that actually is a bowling alley in the back of their church. Um, those are just a couple snippets from my urban hikes. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about the history, but I didn't want to give it all away. Um, so hopefully you guys can come on an urban hike sometime. As I mentioned, I have all of these different routes and um, I have guides as well that help me to lead my hikes. Um, it's been definitely a journey and um, I would be happy to answer any questions about how the journey has been. And I'm still growing slowly, but surely, but I still am growing and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. Well, that's awesome, Lisa. If you have questions, type it in the chat and we will uh, open you up. Uh, I'm curious, what's the feedback been like from folks, particularly last year when we were all so isolated, when you brought groups together, how has that resonated with people? What, what have they told you about the power of being together? People will come on my hikes and they will say, they'll start out saying, wow, I haven't done anything outside of being in my house. Like I haven't done anything with a group for this entire year. That's what people will start out saying. And um, and they say it as like they're, they're thankful first because it's an activity that's socially distanced. We have been wearing masks the entire time. I know I had a couple pictures without masks. This is just very recently since many have been getting their um, COVID vaccinations. Um, but I, but it's, it's this, I mean, people will write specific, it's like, a, I don't know, it's almost like they share how refreshing it is. They might not use the word refresh, but they're like, wow, I haven't been together with any groups of people until this hike. Um, so it's been very, very positive, of course. What's a, what's a good size group? If someone wants to bring a business team or you know, visitors, what's a good size group for a hike for you to be able to engage with people? I'd say about 10 to, 10 to 15, 15 over, or 15 gets pretty big. 10 to 12 is like the perfect group, but 15 is 15 is fine too. I have a microphone that I use when I have groups that are over 10 and um, that helps um, to keep a, you know, to, so that everybody can hear. Uh, but private groups work well, even if they're a little bit bigger, you know, on that on the size of closer to 15, just because they're kind of all aware of each other, because if they know each other, the, the really the only downfall of having a larger group is that sometimes people lag behind a little bit. There's a little bit difference in pace, but 10 to 15 is a really good size. You know, a lot of times people have an idea and they don't know what to do with it. And, and you talked right at the start about it took you a year yes. to turn your idea into reality, which is a lot of determination and a lot of hard work. What did that look like? What did you do for that year to turn that idea into a business and become an entrepreneur? Wow. I, I started talking about it to different people first and asking, you know, sharing it. I remember the first time that I actually shared it in a, in a staff meeting. I worked full-time for Girl Scouts and we were reading this book and this book was to help us to, you know, kind of reach our dreams. And, and I remember I shared that I wanted to start my own business and it was so scary for me in that meeting because I'm sharing this with my boss and my colleagues and, and in theory, starting on my own business would mean I would stop working at Girl Scouts at some point. Um, but I remember I had, I, I was scared to share it and I shared it and everyone was really surprisingly supportive, even my boss. And, and that was, that was one step that, that surprisingly actually kind of helped me to stay motivated because I had this loyalty to Girl Scouts where I worked and, and I started out my business still working at Girl Scouts and I just went full time with it only a year ago. Um, additionally, during that year, though, what I did was I just got outside and started walking and running. I, I love to walk and I love to run and I would and I like to run with someone I would I have my 
sister and a really good friend that I run with. And I would bring them on these in these neighborhoods that I would say, hey, let's run today in the west side and see, you know, what what we could have here for a route. And I would, during our conversation on the runs, I would ask them, what do you think of this building? Or do you think I should find out more information about here? Or if there was an alleyway so that I wouldn't go by myself, I would always wait till I went on my run with someone else. And I'd be like, hey, let's go in this alleyway and see what's there. And, and now I go through tons of alleyways that, um, but it's because I've tested them out plenty of times and I know that they're fine to go in. Um, and I'm always with groups as well. I. I researched, I kept listening actually to podcasts about other entrepreneurs and that really kept me motivated. I mentioned that I heard the idea initially on a podcast and I um, continued to listen to that podcast called Side Hustle Nation. And there's another one that I listened to called Side Hustle School that has interviews with all kinds of different entrepreneurs and most of them are side hustlers but i i would take their ideas like you know their their strategies and and their courage and i would make it my own um that's that's something that i did and then towards the very end i got pretty motivated and had some test hikes with surveys to get feedback got you know that's when i got people to do some um to take pictures for my initial hikes for my website. I, I got someone to help me to make it into an LLC. So that was towards the very end, but I did a lot of research, running, walking, listening, and talking about it to others during that year. I think Kirsten's got a great question here. You want to unmute Kirsten? So what sort of ability or activity level is required for these? I think it would be an outstanding staff development activity, um, but we have all different ability levels and we have one in a wheelchair. So what sort of requirements do you have? That's a great question. And thanks for asking. I forgot to talk about that specifically. Um, do, I am able to customize the hikes so that any ability level can, can do it. Um, I can make them shorter. I know I initially mentioned that they're normally four to six miles, and that's referring to the public hikes that I have that someone can join any time on the weekends. Um, I if, especially since you have someone in a wheelchair, there are a couple areas that are a little bit where the sidewalk isn't really, it's not, there's like lots of rocks and, um, but it's, it's doable. Um, and I would recommend the Crossroads West Side route and we can work to get, we could work together so that we can, um, so I can tell you what the route would be like, but it definitely would be, it would be fine for somebody in a wheelchair and we can make it so that it's maybe two, two miles, um, three miles. If somebody is able to walk around a park for one or two miles, I think they could do the hike easily, especially if we make it less than four or five miles because we're stopping and talking about things. So um, we can, and we could purposely not um, add in like the really huge hills. Okay. Great. Thanks for asking about that. That would that would be great if if you wanted to set something up. And yeah, I would, I, I would like to set something up. So thanks, will, Kirsten. Yeah, I'll put my email in the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Let's go to Michelle. Lisa, it's nice to hear your presentation. I love your business idea. You're getting exercise, but I love the historic part of it. All the touring. I love that. Like, it makes me think when I have family in town, I want to do this because it's something different. Um, so starting your own business, is, is, it can be very difficult, but there's a lot of highs. There's a lot of excitement. You get excited about having this idea and bring it to fruition. But then there's challenging times, especially when you're starting your business during years like this. So how do you keep yourself motivated? How do you keep your team motivated during the times where maybe business is slow or things have changed or you're coming up along pitfalls? How do you how do you keep yourself and everybody motivated? Question. One thing that really helps me to be motivated, um, especially to get new routes out, to develop new routes, is to work with someone. Um, I am. It, 
uh, I'm just so motivated by working to someone. And I know, of course, I'm the only business owner, but I have different guides. And my an example is my Strawberry Hill hike was actually created in co- collaboration with a Strawberry Hill guide that I have. So she was a friend that, or more of an acquaintance, but she's become a friend now. And we work together to develop that route. Um, currently, I'm working on a river um a river market slash partially a West Bottoms Columbus Park route. And I have had that on my radar for over two years from the beginning because there's a whole lot of mafia history. There's so much, there's like slavery history, so many cool things. And I haven't been able to actually pull, like actually be able to pull it out. Um, I say pull it out, like to actually really develop it, to have a product. And what I did is um, I had a friend who was talking about wanting to come on also as a guide. And I was like, hey, I have this idea. Do you want to develop it together? And now just having the accountability of knowing that she's on board, she, she knows that it's something, you know, we've started to work on this project together. So we will go out and we're doing the exploratory walks right now to like their exploratory urban hikes to come up with that. Um, So So finding somebody to work specifically, and I have a mentor, having a mentor has helped me to stay motivated. I have a mentor through SCORE Mentors, and um, that is really, that has been really important for me too, because I, I can easily, you know, if I didn't have someone that I was accountable to, I mean, and not that I'm really accountable to her, but she, I mean, she knows what's going on. If I'm like, uh, I didn't do anything last month, she'll be like, you know, she'll, she'll definitely have some things to say. So um, having her and knowing I'm going to have those monthly meetings with her and then she will give me ideas implementing that has been a big help. Um, And then going back to the time when we were in our stay at home orders where I really couldn't give hikes. And this was last spring where I thought, okay, spring is the best time for hikes because it's the perfect weather. I, I just, I pivoted during that time and I said, okay, what do I really need to focus on? And I realized I needed to focus on building my social media presence. And I worked really hard on my Instagram presence. And I did that. And that was kind of like my project that I had during that time. But I really think for me personally, the best thing to help me to grow and stay motivated is just to have different conversations with the people that I know are really really interested and want the best for my business, like my guides and my mentor. So you talked about score mentors. Is that what, is that the name of it? Okay. I haven't heard of that. Yes, okay. That's a national program. And hmm. we have um, score mentors that are local in Kansas city and it's free. It is a nonprofit. It's free for entrepreneurs. Hmm. It's definitely for me it has been a big help. Oh, that's great. That's, that's yeah. awesome that you mentioned that actually Mary Shannon on here is involved in that program. Oh, great. If you can uh, hear me, Mary. <laughs> she may be offline right now, but she's involved in that and works uh, and does a lot of work with that program. Let's go to uh, Dean. Oh, I'm sorry, Randy. Oh, there I was, you trying, are. To get, I was yeah. trying to get myself <laughs> off mute. Um, yeah, SCORE is a great program. Um I've been working with SCORE um, for the last three years. Um, I started with the mentor and then they developed a SCORE Community Strategic Alliance where we're reaching out to various um, communities, the African-American, the Hispanic um, American communities, um, reaching out to let them know that SCORE is there for them and um, letting them Um, be aware of all of the different programs that SCORE offers. So Lisa, you're absolutely correct. SCORE is great. It is free. And the mentors are retired executives. Um, They love what they do and and they're there for all communities. So yeah, great program. That's so good to hear, Mary, that SCORE is working hard to reach reach out specifically to African-American communities and the Latino communities. Um, if they're, um, I have from my, I was specifically in Girl Scouts working to reach the Latino community with Girl Scouts, and I have a lot of contacts within the business, within the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, with the um, Hispanic Economic Development Corporation, which helps with entrepreneurs that specifically speak Spanish only. Um, so if there's, if you ever wanted 
if the, if those contacts are needed, I imagine you guys have those contacts already, but if they're ever needed, I can help with any introductions needed in that area. Well, that would be great because they do have the, uh, again, the SCORE Community Strategic Alliance, and they're always looking for individuals that can help them with resources and information um, to make sure that the word is out, that they're, you know, basically extending an olive branch to let the communities know that they're there for the, to support them. That's good. I have, yeah, I'll keep, I'm already thinking of some some connections. All right, uh, thank that's, you so much. Yeah, thank I think that's Andy. awesome. I had a conversation with an entrepreneur yesterday that talked about just not knowing where to go to get help about how to grow our business. And, and here you have these resources that, like you said, Lisa, they're free and they're incredible. You know, the experience you can draw on and the help you can get to just have someone to help keep you accountable and help you grow your business. Right. KC SourceLink has also been a help. I, I work with a navigator from KC SourceLink and they have all kinds of support on all different levels. Let's go to uh, Dean. Thanks, Randy. Busy taking notes here. Lisa, thanks. I love your presentation. And it got me thinking that, you, you know what, you may already be doing this, and I'm just not aware of it. But as you're going through the pictures and kind of the history of KC, I thought this is, I don't know, it's really, it's, it's so educational, as well as the um, other benefits that you derive, like physically, and then, you know, emotionally from the being around people and, and learning. Is this uh, with your social media presence? Are you also doing kind of like like GoPro type walking tours and recording some of those to be able to help, I think, kind of spread the word about uh, about these hikes and kind of give people a view uh, in advance of, of what they might look like and what they might experience if they if they ended up signing up? Hmm. That's a great idea. I I'm currently not doing that with GoPro. I do have some videos that that I show if, you know, if someone emails me and they're like, I don't know which hike to do, I'll send them a couple of videos. The GoPro, it's funny because during the pandemic, like when we we're in the state home orders, my husband has a GoPro and he was like, why don't you use this GoPro? And I think that I haven't, I don't feel as comfortable to have with the GoPro and to have like really good footage. Mm -hmm. I, and that's something probably that if I, you know, I was talking about how motivated I get when, if I have someone that's like, Hey, let's do this together, then that would, that would motivate me more because that is an excellent idea to have it. Um, yeah. To have a, to have GoPro, but I, I currently, I don't have that. I haven't spent the time to develop it's, it, it, but it's a good idea. It's like one of those that sounds a lot, probably easier than it really is. To implement. That's, <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause it's all the editing that you have to do. Uh, yeah. There's, um, <laughs> But I, I think it is a great idea. It's, it struck me that, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about something that I'm going to be doing with my youngest daughter on Friday and, and heading over to the art museum. I'm like, she and like classmates would love something like this, you know, to yes. be able to just kind of view in advance and go, oh, this is where we're going to be going and then kind of learn about it in advance and then see it firsthand. Um, kind of like uh, doing studying up on where you're going to go for a field trip. Anyway, mm -hmm. something that struck me, but I really love the presentation. Like I said, I've learned a ton. I've already taken like a page of notes on what you've talked about. So thank you. Wow. Well, thank you. And I have a lot. I didn't highlight the pictures of my Girl Scout hikes, but I give a lot of Girl Scout hikes. I have a, and I give kids hikes too so they're private of course but the people set them up with me but i i make the hikes i customize them to the group how scalable is this i think back to the good old days which were just a year ago where i would do company events all over the country and customer events all over the country and and so have you thought about like you know, urban hikes Atlanta and urban hikes Nashville and things like that. So that if you're doing a company event or a trade show in Nashville, you could get a group of customers and go do a hike and you, you have the name recognition that this is all tied into the Lisa vision and you have a Nashville partner. You know, have you ever thought about going big like that? I, I have, I, I've thought about it and I, I hope to, I, right now I don't have any strategic 
plans like in place to get there by a certain year. And this is what I need to do to get there. But I, um, I, I was in an informal conversation with a good friend in St. Louis and she's like, you could do this in St. Louis. And I think that that's where, that's probably my weak point of actually get like really coming up with the strategic plans and, and, and what, you know, what does it mean? You know, like, do I need to be intent? I would say at least, you know, something, it wouldn't be next year. It would be something like, five years or, you know, just so I can have a really good foundation here. Um, but scalability in general is my hardest. It, it's the, it's like one of my challenges because even though I have other guides still our busiest time around the weekends and you can only have so many, there's only so many time periods in the weekends that were available. Um, but going back to the, going back to other parts of the country, I mean, I, I, that's something if I, if I have a contact like a good trustable, like someone that I can really trust in that area, because there are some things that are really delicate, like not stepping on artists toes with murals and like not making, yeah, and just there's, there's a lot of delicate things and I want to make sure that everything is done right. And, um, but I, I do, I have that kind of in my back pocket um, because it is something that, I could see, I could see happening. I just need to work, like spend time to, to get to that point. I want to go back way early and we didn't talk about this before when you and I talked, but it came up earlier today. And I think this is awesome. You know, being an entrepreneur takes a lot of courage, but you demonstrate some courage pretty early on with that Peace Corps uh, participation. What inspired you to go to Peace Corps, you were dealing with extreme poverty and folks in need. And what did you learn from that experience? Peace Corps. Okay. I was inspired to go to Peace Corps because I, when, when I was in college and in high school, I really, I loved the idea of first of all, living in another country. Um, I realized in and through different volunteer experiences through college, I realized, wow, we have so much in the United States and there are so many countries that have so little and um, we can go and just and share with them and, and it can genuinely help. And that was one of my inspirations for Peace Corps. I also had a selfish inspiration that I really wanted to get better at Spanish. Um, I'm half Latina. My mom speaks Spanish, but my dad doesn't. And as a child, I would always hear my mom speaking Spanish, but she didn't, I didn't know what she was saying. And I mean, she would teach, speak to her friends, to her parents, her sisters. And I have had it on my radar since I was probably about, since I could understand that there are two different languages happening to learn Spanish. And that was another reason why I wanted to go to Peace Corps. So that was a bit selfish. I have learned Spanish and I use it all the time now. I'm an, I interpret on the side. I do all kinds of things um, with Spanish. I, so th those were some of, the, some of the reasons that motivated me to go. But it, the main big reason was because we have so much here. Peace Corps will pay for you to be there. It's not like a mission trip where you have to raise your own funds. Um, you don't have a whole lot of extra money in Peace Corps at all, but you are able to have money to live and to buy food. Um, those were, so those were the motivations to choose Peace Corps specifically. And because it was a government organization, um, I, I have learned, I learned so much. I first of all, learned to be resilient. Peace Corps was hard. Um, at the beginning, it was just this boot, like almost like this explosion of culture. We first had our training in a very urban neighborhood, um, like with just, it didn't, it felt like there was high crime there. There probably wasn't high crime, but it was just extremely urban neighborhood is where we were staying. And so that was a whole culture shock in general, plus a different language, plus just all kinds of levels of culture shock. And I learned to be resilient because I, I, I stayed, I live, you know, I, I lived through it and I, and I thrived. I, I did well. I, most Peace Corps volunteers stay for two years, but I decided to stay for three years. Um, I also learned that there are so many ways to do things. We come, you know, we have like our way to eat. We have our way to, that we do these things in the United States. And then 
by going to the Dominican Republic and actually living with families and working with families and youth that do things differently, but still get the same results really showed me, okay, these are, you know, there's so many ways to do things. And um, it also helped me to be just culturally understanding um, and not to think that, wow, you know, this is like, this is my frame of reference. So, but there's just so many other frames of reference out there and it's, and that's good. Um, So I feel like now I'm, I'm able to relate to someone who um, is from a different culture, somebody who might be a different age than me, someone who I have become much more relatable because of my Peace Corps experience. Um, And and then lastly, I would, with the re- resilience, just just physically, I would say um, f- physically resilient in that there are times where we don't have we don't have running water for um, a you know like a week or so, and and so we had to save water um, when we had water. We'd save them in these huge barrels, and 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 I would take anything I had in addition to this barrel. Like if I had an old orange juice carton I would take the orange juice carton and put water in it to save because I knew that water would be we would go out and we wouldn't have it for a week or so and um and I learned to be really just scrappy in that way like since then I've been in other developing countries and if the water goes out or if the electricity goes out I'm like oh it's okay we can take a bucket bath with you know a gallon of water or here's a half a gallon that that's enough for a bath or you know for a shower and and before Peace Corps, no way. <laughs> like I, um, I, yeah. And, and there was this funny meme that I saw that my Peace Corps friends sent and, and they say, some people say the glass is half full. Some people say the gla- glass is half empty. A Peace Corps volunteer looks at the glass and says, I can take a shower with that water. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an awesome experience. And if nothing else, you have a greater appreciation of just how good we've got it here (laughs) when you have an opportunity to travel over the parts of the world and see the conditions people grow up in and they don't know any different because that's what they grow up in. That's their world. And it's in our world is, is much different and we're pretty fortunate here. (laughs) So true. It's so true. Well, it was awesome spending time with you today, Lisa, and what you're doing is encouraging to see someone uh, on that entrepreneurial journey and building a business. And I think everybody can be inspired by that. Thank you. Thanks. I, I, yeah, I I feel privileged to to be able to share with you guys um, and even to have listening ears. Thank you for listening and for having questions and um, Randy, even for inviting me. Well, it was great to spend time with you. Hope to see you out there on a uh, hike. Uh, do you do anything? Have you thought about doing anything outside Kansas City? You know, uh, hike Lewisburg, which would take about a minute, um, you know, or, or some of the other little towns you, you could go to that, that might be interesting. <laughs> you know, I, I am interested and all I need is is that contact there. So if there's anyone from Lewisburg that has some ideas or from St. Joe, I know there's a lot of high street in St. Joe and it's and it's just like meeting up and doing some exploratory routes and because I, I definitely think it is that's something that is definitely doable coming up with those routes if I have that contact there that would want to help me to develop it. I think, I think Kirsten needs to think about a Miami County hike you know somewhere around here that would be uh, interesting places to go see. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, please, if anybody that has ideas um, for me, please send them over. Um, My website is urbanhikeskc.com. And I'm also on Instagram as uh, and Facebook as Urban Hikes KC. So if you just Google Urban Hikes KC, you will find me. And um, I can, yeah, and you'll see pictures and that's a good way to stay in touch. Awesome. Well, everyone have a great weekend. It was great spending time together and we'll see you all next week. All right. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.